so there, these are geometric sequences. This would make sense since we're in a section about geometric, geometric sequences. It says they're geometric sequences. Also, let's confirm <coughs> the geometric sequence. Well, at least that this one is a geometric sequence. I'm just going to have to take my word for it on this one. Uh, have you confirmed that this is a geometric sequence? Yeah. If you multiply 6 by 3, you get 18, and 18 by 3, you get 4. And. Get the 4, 18, and 4. I know, it seems like silly. But it has to work every time. If it doesn't work every time, it's not geometric. If it works for 54 terms in a row, and the 55th one, it is not multi. You can't get that by multiplying by the same number. It's not geometric. Okay? So we just got to verify that it works for everyone. Now, for geometric sequences, what do we know about the rules for geometric sequences? So can someone tell me what the rule for a geometric sequence is? You multiply the same number to get each term. Okay. Like the formula? The formula. When I say rule now, think of the formula. The rule sounds like anything that tells you how to make it work, right? Like yeah, rule is formula. Rule. A sub n. Yes, a sub n. A sub 1 times r. We don't need that nice memory because it will be on the quiz and the test and stuff. Oh, thank God. But, <laughs> but good memory. Um, the good thing about that is that you know which one goes for geometric sequences. Right? It, the thing, your responsibility will be knowing which formula you can use. <coughs> Alright, so a sub 1. What's a sub 1? 6. Is 6. And what is r? 3. Yeah, chance already told staff to the n minus 1. So same thing for this other one, only we don't know what a sub 1 is, we don't know, don't know what, excuse me, what r is, okay? The idea here is the same as the arithmetic sequence that we figured out earlier. Um, Okay, let me just uh, write this out a little picture here. A sub 4, A sub 5, A sub 6, A sub 7. Multiply by R, multiply by R, multiply by R again, which would be multiply by R three times, or R to the third. And that will? 4, 3, 4374. Uh, yeah. so you got to multiply by R three times to get 4374. And then? Five, five, one, two, three. Solve it for R here, so we'll divide by 162. R cubed equals? We don't have to. Remember that we, we talked in class about how there are these. Uh, sometimes you'll have to make two different rules because maybe r is positive and maybe r is negative. But if you multiply by the same number three times and start with a positive and end with a positive, you had to have been multiplying by a positive number. That's the case here. Or if you're taking the third root, you know, it's just the third root of a positive is a positive, the third root of a negative is a negative. So r equals three. Now, what are we going to do? to know one other thing. What do we need to know? A sub 1. So how are we going to find A sub 1? Yeah, same idea. Divide by 3, that'll give us A sub 3. Divide by 3 again, A sub 2. Divide by 3 again, that'll give us A sub 1. Yes. Alright. We can do it that way. You can just take, a, what was it, 162, divide by 3, divide by 3, divide by 3. Fine. Uh, we can also think of it this way. A sub 1, whatever it is, we're going to multiply by r once, twice, three times, r to the third. And that's going to give us 162. Okay. So that's so the first way was just take 162. We know that if we go forward, we're multiplying. If we go backwards, we're dividing. So we divide by 3 three times. <coughs> or I can say that 
if I think of it the other way, a sub 1 times r three times will get me to 162. Here's a third way of thinking about it. All I did right here, really, was take this formula and substitute everything in that I already know, except for I don't know a sub 1. But I know that a sub 1 times r to the n minus 1 equals a sub n. I know an a sub n. Actually, I know two a sub n's. I actually could have used either one that I want. Right? So whichever way you think of it, you pretty much get to the same place, uh, except for that I put r here instead of what r is, which is 3. So this is 27, 162 divided by 27. It's what? Six. six. A sub one is six. We're not done. We've got to finish and write the formula. A sub n equals six times three to the n minus one. What? If you think about it like this, when you multiply by a number repeatedly, that those numbers get big really fast. And uh, so you don't want to start at a number that's too big, and you don't want to multiply by a number that's too big. So you're probably picking numbers from like 1 to 10 to start with, and probably numbers between 1 and, well, not even 1, probably 2 to 5, 2 to 6 to multiply by. So there's always some possibility. Okay, any questions about either of those? Your mind blown and you're enlightened? Good, enlightenment is good. Um, finding the sum. tell you that it's a geometric sequence, so that's a good given thing. Um, what about looking at the rule? How can I tell that this is a geometric sequence? <coughs> it follows the rule. It looks like the rules that we've been writing. We've just wrote two of them. This looks just like one of those. Right? A number times a number raised to a power of maybe power of i, power of i minus 1. So great. We, we have this formula then for the sum of the first n numbers in a geometric sequence or series. Um, it is a one, one, uh, one minus r n to the n over one minus r. If you say r n, I think r times n. So r to the n with the r raised to the n. I was gonna think you're, like you're talking to somebody over the phone, but you can only hear what you're saying. Just write it down. Okay. So you gotta get a figure out all this stuff. What's the first number in the string of numbers that we're gonna have together? Six, we put a one there, one minus one is zero, four to zero is one, six times one is six. So S sub eight, eight equals six times one minus, what's R? Four, it's four, that's part of the rule, is saying what R is, so that's an easy given thing. Four to the eighth power over one minus, which is four. All right, so this is negative three, and negative three cancels to six, that leaves us at two, and one down here. Uh, one minus was four to the eighth. Sixty-five thousand five hundred and thirty four. Good luck, Jess. Okay. We have two times uh, one minus six that sixty-five thousand five hundred and thirty-six is negative sixty-five thousand five hundred and thirty-five. Divided by negative one. Sixty-five thousand. Yeah. 
Let's quickly ask this hypothetical question. What if we had i equals uh, 1 to the, no, not 1, but uh, 6 um, times, or to the, uh, let's say, 12. Uh, 6 times 4 to the i. That's not i minus 1. Just kind of think about. What pieces is like this, this thing looking for? <coughs> uh, it's looking for the first term in the series that you're going to be adding up. What's the first term in the series going to be for how we find it? Big. Big, because six. how do you find it? It's like six in there. Okay, so the first term is going to be four to the sixth times six. Time six. Um, let's see, this one is a little bit. One minus <coughs> to the n. Or what's r to the n? R to the n is one or sixteen million seven hundred seventy-seven thousand seven hundred twenty-two. Uh oh, I put, I put twelve instead of eight. Okay, what is it again? Uh, 16 million, 777,216. Big number, big number. <laughs> okay. Uh, then this should be, I would think this should be to the, like, this is R to the last number, this should be R to the first of the number. This would be 1 minus r to the 2,000. So it's what? 2,000. Or 24,576. Okay. That should be it. Okay. Can I do the math? No, that, <laughs> that can't be right. One of these is not right. It can't be the same thing. This is the first term. Yeah. That would be four to the sixth times six. This would just be four to the sixth. Oh. So which one is it? Which four thousand ninety six. Four thousand ninety six? Yeah. Um, I 
that's not too bad over there. So it's in the hundred millions, 141,657,872. Mm -hmm. So the way we could replace this with, uh, I think I put three instead of two for the first. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> okay. I had three thousand instead of this is fun. This is twenty thousand. What is it? Chance? <laughs> All right. I'll do it again. Oh. Jeez, chance. I thought you had it. I thought it was better. Uh ten million fifty one thousand five hundred. One thousand five hundred four. Eighty four. Eighty. I have eighty four. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. So that was fun. That was good. That was not good. Um. Are there any questions from? Anybody use the video? Uh, okay, so a binary search works like this. There's a list of stuff, okay? You're a computer and you need to find one thing. Okay, the thing you know about this list is that it's in order. Because that's good. Because if you're here, then the things to your left are somehow from before, right? By some rule. It could be numerical, alphabetical by size, by something, by anything. Um, right. So if you're looking right there, and the thing, you're not look, the thing you're looking for is not the thing you see. If you're looking at something, it's not the thing you're looking for. You just ask yourself, well, is the thing I'm looking for, is it less, or is it greater, or is it from before, or is it from after where I am looking? <coughs> right. So one fairly efficient way of looking for stuff in an ordered list is called binary search where I start by looking at the middle of this set of data. I look at that middle thing, and is that the thing I'm looking for? If it is, then great, I found it. If it's not, then if it's bigger, I move over here in the middle of that bigger set, the set of things that are bigger or come after. And then if it's smaller or comes before, then I go to the middle of that uh, set that comes before. So say I look here, okay. So first I narrowed it down to half of the stuff, right? And I'm looking in that half of the stuff. And then I look here and it's not there, so I'll come back and uh, go to the middle of that, and go to the middle of that, and go to the middle of that. Right? Until I find the thing that I'm looking for. Worst case is it comes down to two things, and the very last move that I make is like half of half of the set that's left is one thing. Okay, so the amount of stuff that I'm looking for always is one half of the size of the stuff that I was looking for before, right? So if I start with, in part A, 1,024 things, after that, if it's not right in the middle, then I'm going to be looking in how many things? That's about 112 things. And if I didn't find it in the, in the middle of that set, then I'm going to go left or right of that and look in how big of a set? 256. And after that? 80. And after that? 64. And after that? 32. What? 32. 32. 32. 
16, 8, 4, 2, and then finally, worst case, that last thing is the one I was looking for. That last thing. Okay. So we're supposed to write our rule. What, the, what, what does this look like? Sequence. What kind? Geometric. Geometric, where we multiply by? Two. Well, this way, we multiply by one half. So we start with 1,024, multiply by one half to the n minus, n minus 1. Put parentheses around there, that's really important. Otherwise, you just think the n minus 1 is the 1 and not the 2. What do you know? That's what we were supposed to do for part A. In the worst case, the item to be found is the only one left in the list after n passes through the list. Uh, n passes through the list. What is the worst case, worst case value of n for a binary search of a list with 100 or 1,024 items? Okay. So they're asking for this. Not necessarily how many passes, but what n is. Okay. So, well, that's a sub one. A sub 2, A sub 3, A sub 4, A sub 5, A sub 6, A sub 7, A sub 8, 9, A sub 10, A sub 11. So 11 to get there. Actually, it didn't take 11, it took 10 like passes to get there, I guess, starting from our initial, like just looking at the giant set of about 24 things and then deciding to go into the middle. N equals 11 would be the worst case value of N. Okay. Any other questions? N. 1, if we go, if we go from 0 to 10, we'd have to go from 1 to what? 11. 11. We do it this way. Which means that this would have to change. I plus 1. I plus 1? No. But when I plug in 1 in here, whatever, whatever this is, I need it to be the same as plugging 0 in here. Minus 1. 1 and minus 1. I minus 1. Now now it's just like a geometric sequence, where the initial, the a sub 1 is what? What is this number right here? as I've written it here, think of it as a sub 0 plus a sub 1 plus a sub 10. All of this could be um, just the sum of the first 10 terms <coughs> using that rule, it that way. So this becomes i equals 1 to 10 of negative 4 to the i. And then this is just a sub 0. What's a sub 0? Zero in there, we get one. But one plus all of this other stuff. Um, when you think about this formula, you might think it's kind of, uh, I don't know, not quite going to work, but it will work. Uh, R minus, one minus R N over one minus R. All this means is the first number in the sequence. Okay, and the first number in the sequence is I'm going to plug one in there. That means zero. This? Yes. No. We took this This right here is a sub zero plus a sub one plus plus four plus, plus a sub oh. ten. Right? So we'll take this one off so that this looks more like. Cut out. If you look in your book, though, 
this formula is four when this is one and this is ten. Okay. So this right here, a sub one, now we can actually plug in one. And that way, negative four to the one is negative four. Negative four times negative four times one minus r to the n over one minus r, which is just r. Oh, sorry, r is uh, negative four. I don't know why I do that. Four to the ten, negative four there. Uh, over here, we could uh, use the formula on this one. A sub 1 now would be plug in 1, 1 times 1 minus r to the, oh sorry, negative 4 to the 11th over 1 minus negative 4. you have it like this. This is just the first number in the series, whatever that first one will be when you <laughs> plug in that lowest number. And this will be r to the that, and this will be r to whatever this is. Put a from 1 to 10, or 0 to, or yeah, or from 1 to 11, or 0 to 10. looks like this. Uh, a sub 1 times r to the n minus 1. Then we can just plug in uh, a sub 1, right? Plug in 1 here, and or whatever this number is right here. Uh, 1 minus r, which is this, to the n over 1 minus r, to the n. The ones that I have in the quiz, they start at 1. Questions? Just passing the 